What if Germany and Russia swapped? In our own timeline following the February Revolution, Germany sent Vladimir Lenin to Russia to stire up a revolution and stire up a revolution he did. Following the October Revolution and the subsident Russian Civil War, he proclaimed the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, which would be the first communist country in the world, which would be after his death lead by Joseph Stalin. Meanwhile Germany lost the First World War and was humiliated. In the newly created Weimar Republic radicals from both the right and left would challenge the way things are going, which culminated in 1933 when Chancellor Paul von Hindenburg appointed party leader of the NSDAP Adolf Hitler as the Chancellor of Germany only for him to establish a National Socialist dictatorship centered around himself. In 1939 these two polar opposite powers would sign the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and divide Eastern Europe only to finally come to a head in 1941 when Germany invaded the Soviet Union. But what if that didn't happen? What if Germany and Russia swapped? On August 30, 1918 Fanny Kaplan would shoot Vladimir Lenin during a speech in southern Moscow which would fatally kill him. This would destabilize the Reds and rival governments are established for example by Yosef Stalin, Leon Trotsky or Nikolai Bukharin. This all happened when the Whites were already at their territorial height and now with the Reds fracturing, they launch a massive offensive and they lose more and more land until all that is left are Moscow and Leningrad, which too would fall by 1919. Alexander Kolchak, who was the supreme ruler of the Russian state, would become the ruler of Russia. Fortunately for the Russian people Alexander Kolchak who begrudgingly took over Russia and favored democracy, volunteered to abdicate and Alexander Kolchak became the first democratically elected president of Russia in 1920. But not all was sunshine for Russia, because not only did the death of Lenin coincide with the Whites being at their strongest, but also with the Polish-Soviet War. With the Reds collapsing Poland expanded far into the West. The Second Polish Republic would establish friendly regimes in Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Belarus, and Ukraine to form a bulwark against Russia, known as the Intermarium, a defensive alliance aimed at Russia and Germany. Speaking of the devil. In Germany the Spartacist uprising is more of a success, and would be known as the January Revolution. Following the January Revolution a civil war would engulf the nation. The communists are led by Karl Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg, whereas the anti-communists or whites are led by Prince Max von Baden and Friedrich Ebert later Paul von Hindenburg. The communists are especially strong in the cities, while the anti-communists are strong in rural areas. At first it seemed like the anti-communists are going to win, but this would quickly change and by the end of 1923 it is the communists who are victorious. The anti-communists would flee to East Prussia where, they established the Königsberg Republic. In its first election the monarchist DNVP became the biggest party and formed a coalition with the NSFP and WP. Similar to the NSDAP in our own timeline the DNVP under Oskar Hurt T would start to degrade democracy, which was amplified with the integration of Paul von Hindenburg as Chancellor. Together with help from the German People's Party and the Center Party, the Enabling Act was passed and soon thereafter the monarchy was restored under Wilhelm II. In Germany proper Karl Liebknecht becomes General Secretary of the Communist Party. Unlike Stalin however he is more moderate and less authoritarian. He would however denounce the Treaty of Versailles and soon thereafter rebuild the German army. During the Civil War Upper Silesia voted to join Poland for fears of communist takeover. While the communists took over Germany, France established the Rhenish Republic in the Palatinate and Rhine province as a buffer against the communists. Given that this Germany started to violate the Treaty of Versailles ten years earlier, its army is better than it was in our own timeline. In Mongolia after the Bogdi Khan died, Roman von Ungern Sternberg became ruler of Mongolia, and he ruled with an iron fist. In 1924 Alexander Kerensky would win re-election but especially in his second term the problems Russia faces are getting worse. In 1928 Alexander Kolchak returned to politics by being the presidential nominee for the right, consisting of monarchists and fascists, and he would defeat Viktor Chernov and become president. In 1929 the Great Depression still happens. During this the Russian fascist party under Konstantin Rodzevsky would grow massively. 
1932 Alexander Kolchak, now supported by liberal parties like the SRSK Days or Octoberists just narrowly won against Rodzewski. But in 1933 he would appoint him as prime minister and he would start to dissolve democracy in Russia. With Kolchak's death in 1934 this process was finished. Russia would start to massively build up its army planning for conquest. In 1937 Russia helps Japan to win the Second Sino-Japanese War that ends by 1938. Russia annexes Mongolia and Xinjiang while Japan takes the rest. Russia would then demand Belarus. Poland and the Western Allies would refuse and on September 1 Russia would invade Belarus and Ukraine. Soon thereafter Germany would also launch an invasion of Poland and declare war on Imperial Germany. Finland, Czechoslovakia and Romania would a slow be dragged into the war and even though they hoped for French help they just remained at the Maginot Line. Eventually Eastern Europe would fall to Germany and Russia who partition it. Russia annexes Ukraine, Belarus, Bessarabia, Bukovina and parts of Finland, while Germany annexes Prussia and Posen and puppets Poland, Czechoslovakia and the Baltics. Germany would then successfully conquer France and the Benelux, followed by Austria. During this Italy, who is part of the tripartite pact with Russia and Japan failed to conquer Greece and so Russia forced Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria and Yugoslavia to join the Axis. In 1941 the Axis would launch Operation St. Vladimir, or the invasion of Germany. The war would be brutal for everyone involved, but the Russians just have the upper hand and eventually manage to push all the way to Berlin. Both Germany and Allies, fearing a fascist takeover, form a truce to fight against Russia and Italy, later also Japan. The Battle of Berlin ends in a Russian disaster and the war freezes at the Oder River. In 1942 the Axis launched an invasion in the south that fell short in Munich, where the Italians and Russians were encircled. From there the Allies started to push the Russians back. In 1943 they also land in Italy and conquer the Italian peninsula, all while the Russians lose in lots. By 1944 the war has frozen, roughly where it begun, and the Allies stopped to lend lease Germany. In 1945 the United States nuked Suestopol and Yekaterina Day, but Russia didn't budge, and the war continues. In 1946 the Americans landed in Japan, and it was forced to surrender. Japan lost all of its gains with China and Korea regaining independence only for Russia to invade them. They take Manchuria, Beijing, and all of Korea. The war would just move slowly and nukes would be dropped on all of Russia until 1948 when Russia was finally capitulated. Eastern Europe is completely destroyed and most, if not all Russian cities are leveled to the ground. The casualties for Russia alone are above 50 million and the overall casualties are 150 to 200 million. Most of Russia fell to the Western Allies, but the areas of higher population density fell to Germany. Germany also maintained the entire Intermarium, Northern Italy and France, and so controls most of Europe. A Cold War between the United States and German Socialist Republic would start. In 1952 Germany developed its first atomic weapon and just one year later in, in 1953 Karl Liebknecht dies in World War I and two veteran Ernst Thalmann became general secretary of the Communist Party. He is more of a hardliner and authoritarian compared to his predecessor. In 1954 following request from the Stasi, a Stasi-run state was created in Belgium and northern France, known as Stasi Burgundy. In 1956 Communist Italy would invade Capitalist Italy and made rapid gains with only Reggio Calabria holding out only for the West to push the Communists to the Alps, and then the war to freeze roughly where it begun. The Suez Crisis might still happen with similar outcome but with here France being just more irrelevant than it already was. Decolonization would lead to Franafrique gaining independence culminating with the independence of Algeria and leaving free France with its islands and Guiana. The Cuban Revolution and Missile Crisis also happen and Germany pulls out its nukes from Cuba, while the US pulls its nukes out of Italy. Following the Cuban Missile Crisis, Ernst Thalmann abdicated and Eric Honecker became General Secretary. The Vietnam War wouldn't happen in this timeline as Germany is two oceans away from Vietnam and because the Chinese Civil War ended in a victory for the KMT. A war similar to Vietnam might however break out in Spain between communist Maquis and the pro-Western Francoist regime. Giving the theme of the video, 
the United States would eventually be forced to withdraw, leading to a communist victory. In 1985 Honecker was killed and Egon Krentz became general secretary, and under him Germany liberalized and opened up. He ended the Cold War with the United States, and the German satellites became independent with East and West Russia reuniting. His reforms made him enemies and lead to a coup attempt in 1991 that was stopped by Helmuth Schmidt. From there the German Socialist Republic collapsed into its sovereign states of whom the biggest was Prussia. Prussia did find itself at the Freisissen War, which it would lose only for it under Lutz Heilmann to retake the region. In the Prussian Hessian War in 2008 it would also take control over the northern portion. In 2014 Prussia would take the east bank of the Rhine from the Rhenish Republic only to invade it in 2022. Meanwhile the Eurasian Union and Northern Treaty Organization would grow massively in Russia, now having the third biggest economy in the world would support the Rhenish Republic in its war. In this timeline fascist Russia loses THR Second World War and gets partitioned only to then become a shining example of European democracy, while communist Germany would challenge the United States in the Cold War only for it to collapse and Prussia to become the new threat to European peace. If you liked the episode, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.